Hello everyone, my name is Chad Broom. I'm the pastor of the Trinity Bible Church. This is our YouTube channel. And today we're looking at the subject of forgiveness, especially answering the question, how can I know that God forgives me? A question many people ask, and we need assurance on that question. How can I know that God forgives me? If that's a question on your heart, then stick around and let's look at a few passages of Scripture together that um, may help you answer the question and end with a, a real deep sense of assurance that you are forgiven by God. Or maybe show you what you need to do in order to be forgiven by God. Lord Jesus, I pray that as we just share a few passages of Scripture today and as we look at the subject of how to know that God forgives me, that you would speak to our hearts, Lord Jesus, that this would be a question that doesn't need to come up again in our minds and our hearts because we've understood clearly what the Bible teaches about this and about the extent of God's forgiveness of our sins. Help us to understand the part we play with regards to forgiveness as well. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you that you love us. Your word teaches us that you love us. Your sacrificial death on the cross teaches us that you love us. Your willingness to, to give up your throne in heaven and come to earth in the form of a human shows us that you love us. And so we are surrounded by evidence that you love us. The world that you created for us to live in shows us that you love us and the playground you've given us to live life and to do life is quite amazing and yet it's filled with difficulties and hardships and pain and so we need you Jesus we need you speak to our hearts today amen well folks we're gonna just jump right in there we are answering the question how can I know that God forgives me. And this is a series. So if you go look at our YouTube channel, you will see that we are going through two series. One where we look at the major themes of every book of the Bible. And then another series that's far more topical where we answer questions about our faith. And today it's on this issue of forgiveness. How can I know that God forgives me? We're going to start with Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. And the, the first point I want to make is that Isaiah 1 verse 18 shows that God removes sin's stubborn stain from our lives. So let's see what the verse says. It says, come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Crimson was the color of a very stubborn and permanent dye. Its stain was virtually impossible to remove from clothing. Now, of course, with regards to clothing, that's exactly what you want. You want a good dye that can't come out, that's permanent, that doesn't fade with time. Crimson is a deep red color, and our sins are likened to it, both in its color and in its permanence. Verse 15 of Isaiah chapter 1 says the following. It says, your hands are full of blood, meaning they are guilty their hands are, have, have, have shed innocent blood. They are guilty of murder and of killing. But it can also mean they are guilty of improper sacrifice. So sacrificing and, and, and shedding the blood of an animal as a sacrifice for your sins. It, they are guilty of doing that in an unworthy manner. Um, they are guilty of abusing the sacrificial system. That's, that can also be a meaning for the statement, your hands are full of blood. You see, it's easy to offer sacrifices without any intent 
to turn from disobedience. In other words, it's easy to offer a sacrificial offering as a form of, 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 of um, paying for the penalty of our sin, but our heart's not in it. And we're not even remotely repentant. It's easy to do that. And so, this verse is showing us clearly that there is this stubborn stain of sin. And it doesn't just go away by external sacrifices. The stain of sin cannot be cleansed by ourselves. It's permanent. That is, though, until we become willing and obedient to Christ. Until we repent from our hearts. Until there's this wholehearted repentance. There's this deep conviction of sin. And there's repentance that flows. There's confession. There's admission. Outward rituals mean nothing without a heart turned to Christ. And so this is important. So here in Isaiah, we see the promise of God to clean us as white as snow, as white as wool. That's the promise. And so with regards to our question, how can we know God forgives us? Here in Isaiah, he's saying, this is what I do. God shows, God, Isaiah shows us that God removes sin's stubborn stain from our lives. He wants to forgive us. Now, Psalm 32 reveals that God forgives us. It reveals that He does do that. Not just that He wants to do that, but He does do that. So listen to Psalm 32, verse 1 through to 5. It says the following. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. Hmm. It seems to be like God wants to forgive us. Verse 5, uh, sorry, verse 3. Now it's the psalmist speaking, David. He says, When I kept silent... My bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my sin, my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Now that's David speaking. David is speaking. David had committed gross sin. David had committed adultery. David had committed murder. And he was hiding it and not confessing it and admitting it. And so he was groaning under the anguish of that and under the guilt of that. And so Psalm 32, the first two verses, show us several things that God does with our sins, which reveal to us that, that God certainly does forgive us our sins. So what does it show us? Well, it makes a clear statement. He forgives disobedience. That's sin. Disobedience is sin. Transgressions is another word that, that the Bible uses here. He forgives it. It makes a statement. That's what he does. How do I know God forgives our sins? Because that's what he does. He forgives our sins. Then it says, he puts sin out of sight. Other versions say, he covers our sins. They're, they're no longer visible. And then it says, he clears our record of guilt. So there's a record being kept of our sins, and he clears that record. How beautiful is that? Okay, that's simply saying, God does not count our sins against us anymore. Why? Because he's forgiven us. How do I know that? Psalm 32 tells me that. So folks, the Bible is our source of instruction about God's forgiveness. And God's word, Isaiah 1 verse 18, now Psalm 32 verse 1 and 2, clearly show God's desire to forgive us, his willingness to forgive us, and what the extent of that forgiveness is. I mean, very clear here. He forgives disobedience. Boom, statement. Okay, how can I know? Well, there it says it clearly. 
uh, what else does it say? It says he puts sin out of sight. He covers it. He deals with it in a way that it's no longer there and in my sight he's dealt with it. And he cleans, he clears our record of guilt. Mm, thank you, Lord. Now, Paul quotes those very verses in Romans chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. He says this, Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against him. And here he, he, he's speaking also about Abraham. And, and, he, and he shows that Abraham's sins weren't forgiven because of any great deeds he did. Abraham's sins were forgiven because he believed God. He trusted God. And God counted that as righteousness. It wasn't because Abraham was special. It was because Abraham put his faith in God. And once you put your faith in God, you receive the forgiveness that God gives. And this is the promise here. Now, Psalm 32 and Psalm 51 should be read together because they are repentant Psalms of David and they refer to the same event. His sins against Bathsheba and against Uriah and ultimately therefore against God. And for a while he tried to hide this and he was groaning. It says, my bones wasted away through groaning all day long while I try to hide my sin. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Folks, we don't forget the sins we did. We don't forget them. They're always before us. We just don't forget them, especially when it's caused a lot of pain and suffering for others. But our, our inability to forget our sins doesn't mean God has not forgiven us already if we've confessed it in the past. And so then David, in true repentance, says, Against you and only you have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in the secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop that I may be clean wash me and i will be whiter than snow there's another picture of what god promises to cleanse you whiter than snow in the previous passage in in, in um, isaiah it wasn't cleansing whiter than snow it was um it was as white as snow and as white as wool. And now here in um, psalm 51 he, he's saying cleanse me whiter than snow so, what do we see as we read that, though? We realize that central to forgiveness is repentance. Don't forget that. In Psalm 32, verse 3 to 5, we see that an unrepentant heart suffers under guilt, but a repentant heart experiences the, the, the freedom that forgiveness brings, and it removes our guilt. So, Answering the question, how can I know God forgives me? How can we know God forgives us? Well, first of all, from the scriptures we've read so far, God wants to forgive us. He's not trying to withhold forgiveness at all. Even though our sins don't deserve forgiveness, he makes it clear he does forgive. And the extent of that forgiveness includes that he forgives our disobedience. That's his extent. It reaches to our sin. It reaches to our disobedience. He puts our sin out of sight and covers it. And he clears our record of guilt. And he doesn't count our sins against us anymore. Hmm. Right. Now, let's look at another passage of scripture. And see how it reveals the subject of God forgiving us. Hebrews 10 verse 17 reveals that God 
forgets my sins forever. Now, I think this is a great verse when it comes to answering the question, how do I know God forgives my sins? We've already seen two passages of scripture that make that clear, that God does. So the word of God declares it. But Hebrews 10, 17 shows that he forgives, but also forgets. That's quite amazing. So this is what it says. Hebrews 10, verse 17 and 18. Then he adds, Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. I will remember no more. I will forget, in other words, I will choose to forget those sins. This is God's promise to us. Verse 18 says, And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. So notice the words, remember no more. That's just a simple way of saying, or another way of saying, I will forget those sins. I won't remember them anymore. So how can he hold us accountable to sins that he's chosen to remember no more? He won't. Christ forgives completely is what this is trying to convey. So I can know that God forgives and I can know that he forgives completely. There is no need to confess our past sins repeatedly. We don't need to do that. That's really complete redundancy. Why keep repeating confession of a sin that God has already forgiven and not only forgiven, forgotten? He's, he's, he's completely forgiven you of that. And so you don't need to keep bringing it up. As believers in Christ, we can be confident that the sins we confess and renounce are forgiven and even forgotten. It's worth noting that in Christ, the guilt of all our sins has been removed. That's what he did for us on the cross of Calvary. He paid the penalty for the consequence of our sins. And he did that for mankind on the cross. And so the, the penalty of our sins, past sins, present sins, and future sins, the penalty of those sins has been taken away. It's been removed. And we've been given eternal life. For all those sins, past, present, and future. Sins you haven't even done yet have been dealt with and the consequence of those sins has been dealt with in Christ and the punishment of those sins has been removed from you. That's the gift of salvation to us. It's, it's deep and far-reaching. But like David, when we remain silent with unconfessed sin in our hearts, we suffer a deep sense of guilt and shame. And it's kind of like our bones are breaking. We're aching under the weight of unrepentant heart. It's because we are hiding it. We are not acknowledging it. We're not recognizing we're sinners. We cannot hide our sin. Even though God's dealt with our sin, past, present, and future, when it comes to my sinfulness here today, I can't hide that. I can't make like that sin doesn't matter. I have to acknowledge it. If I don't, I will waste under the weight of that, the guilt of that, the shame of that, the regret of that. All those things will weigh heavily upon me because it breaks the heart of God and it, it damages the fellowship I have with God because I'm making a mockery of sin. I'm going, oh, I don't need to confess this. I don't need to deal with this. I'll just hide it from everybody. I'll just hide it from God. You can't hide it from God though, can you? Because God knows everything. He sees everything everything. He knows the thoughts you're about to think before you've even thought them. You cannot hide from God any action, any thought, any desire, any attitude. You can't hide it from God. It's there and God sees it. And so David had to realize he couldn't hide his guilt from God. And we too must, must realize that. David, like David, we when we remain silent with unconfessed sin in our hearts, we suffer under deep guilt, a sense of guilt. 
But our repentance turns that around completely so that we experience God's forgiveness fully and we're experiencing a restoring of the fellowship with God. It's vital we get this. We restore that fellowship. I'm going to add to that in a moment as we look at the next verse. You may have given your heart to Jesus, but if you have sins you are not willing to confess or own up to, then you will suffer like David did under that guilt and shame until you admit and you repent and you confess. Now, this leads me to another assuring verse. 1 John 1 verse 9 assures us that God forgives our sins and cleanses us from wrongdoing. See, 1 John 1 verse 9 says the following. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Here is the promise to God. This is the promise David needed. And David shows us that because I, 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 while I remained silent, I suffered. And then when I confessed my sin, I experienced the joy of forgiveness. You see, if we confess, that statement, if we confess, shows us that repentance and confession are our requirements regarding our sin. We have a responsibility regarding sins. That's what I was saying in the previous point under Hebrews. That even though God will remember our sin no more, we still need to be confessing this day and in this time. The confession of our sins frees us to enjoy fellowship with Christ. That's the importance of current confession and not hiding it. It frees us to enjoy fellowship with Christ. Remember again, David groaning whilst he remained silent and hid his sin and did not confess it. As Christians, that happens to us too. Your confession restores your fellowship with God. It brings your deeds to the light and allows God to work deeply in your heart when you confess. Without this confession, you will never experience the deepest and most infinite, uh, intimate fellowship with God. You won't experience the fullness of forgiveness. Although you are forgiven, although your sins have been dealt with through Christ's sacrifice on the cross, you personally, right here, right now, won't experience the depth of that forgiveness, the, the depth of a close, intimate relationship with God, because... You've got uncon unconfessed sin because you're grieving the Holy Spirit, because you are making a mockery of sin in those moments. You're hiding sin as though it can be hid. Can't be hid. Without confession, you will never experience that deep intimacy in fellowship. But with confession, with repentance, comes restored fellowship with God. Now, I want to just make a little note here that I have already preached a sermon on why repentance and confession are necessary. So look up that sermon on our Trinity Bible Church sermon YouTube channel and you'll find out more about that. Because um, it answers the question, if God has already forgiven us our sins because of Christ's death, why must we continue to confess our sins? And I've briefly explained that to you now. But I want to just add these things, but then go look at the sermon. Because when we confess our, confess our sins now, we are agreeing with God that our sin truly is sin and that we are willing to turn from it. We're not hiding it. Secondly, ensuring we don't conceal our sins from Him and consequently, consequently from ourselves. You see, the moment we keep our sin hidden from God, we're not dealing with it. And we are creating a barrier between ourselves and God. He's your father. He loves you, cares for you, and he's made a way for you to receive eternal life. But you bring in unrepentant hearts to, to, the, to God. You have unconfessed sin in your life, and you create this barrier between you and God. It just, just destroys the fellowship. And then thirdly, um, we, we, we understood that this is basically what 1 John 1 verse 9 is teaching. Um, that when we confess our sins, we are recognizing 
our tendency to sin and we are relying on his power to overcome it. So it's vital that we confess. It's vital that we admit our sins. Even though if I sin and I don't confess it tonight and I go to sleep and I die in my sleep, when I wake up I will be in eternity in heaven with the Lord even though there was an unconfessed sin. Because not con it's not about whether I was able to confess it quickly in time or not to be saved or not. You're already saved through Christ's sacrificial death on the cross and your faith in what Christ did for you on the cross. That's where salvation comes from. This is talking about <clears throat> making the fellowship sweet between you and the Father. And if you don't confess sin, you've got a, a wall, a barrier between you and God. So in conclusion, the question we answer today is, how can I know that God forgives me? Well, Isaiah 1 verse 18 shows God removes sin, sub and stain from our lives. Psalm 32 reveals that God forgives me, covers my sin, and does not hold my sin against me. In other words, He removes my guilt. Yay! Hebrews 10, 17 reveals that God not only forgives me, He forgets my sins forever. And finally, 1 John 1 verse 9 assures us that God's forgiveness of our sins, that God forgives our sins and cleanses us. He washes us from all wrongdoing. So what's left to do? What do we need to do in response to that? Turn to Jesus and repent. The Bible makes it clear that God can and wants to forgive us our sins. That can only become a reality if we turn to Jesus and repent. Today should be that day for you. If you need to, the, to experience the joy of God's forgiveness and the joy of salvation from sin's penalty, which is death. Turn to Jesus, be forgiven and cleansed and inherit eternal life. The benefits are enormous. Don't go through life without a relationship with Jesus. You need Jesus. And when you have Jesus in your heart, you live life to the full. When you have Jesus in your heart, you have forgiveness of sins. When you have Jesus in your heart, you have an eternal reward and an eternal inheritance in heaven. When you have Jesus in your heart, you become part of God's family. There's no other way to be part of God's family. There's no other way to experience redemption and forgiveness except through Jesus Christ and the shedding of His blood on the cross for your sins he paid the price so you wouldn't have to pay the price and now he deeply desires to forgive you of your sins so that you can walk in a beautiful close relationship with God a relationship where your sins aren't held against you let's pray father God thank you that you want to forgive us thank you that your word is very clear that you do forgive us when we repent of our sins. Thank you for the, for the extent of that forgiveness and how deep it goes and that ultimately it assures us of eternity with you. But help us, Lord Jesus, today to keep short accounts of sin so that we can walk in fellowship with you. We can walk in, in, in the cool of the evening as Adam and Eve did in real fellowship with our God, our Father, and our Lord, and our Savior. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. Amen. Go with God. Have a great week.